Welcome to the D&D Fitness Radio Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Don Saladino from New York City and Derek Hansen from Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. And listen, um, Derek and I are really excited to have you on. And I, and I, and I think um, the, the reason why we wanted to bring you on today is Lumen, I, I've been using it religiously living literally living with it for oh, the last we, we talk a lot about you so it's it's not Thank my you. first encounter with you we we, we look you. at it and it's super exciting for us Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, we, we fortunately were able to get a lumen over to Derek and I know he's been playing around with the last few weeks. I, I've been using it and really was able to dive into it at a, at a good time. And I want to explain to people what lumen is. And I really want to start with the nuts and bolts of, you know, how you were inspired to start this company with your, with your, with your wife, is it? Yes. <laughs> right. So, so with, with your wife and I want to kind of dive into the nuts and bolts and not get too nitty gritty on the science part portion of it. But um, Lumen, I'm going to explain it as it's a, it's a device, and I'm going to hold it up right now for the people who've never seen it. And this is a way that we're able to measure our metabolism that day and determine whether we need to be on more of a carbohydrate adapted diet or more of a fat adapted diet. So in my eyes, it's taking any of the guesswork out of carb cycling, where nutritionists are always trying to turn around and say, all right, well, let's do our low day, our high day. The guesswork's, the guesswork's gone. You know, some right. days it'll throw me on a high day and I'll say, you know what, you need another high day, which is fascinating where in the, in, it, it, you know, most nutritionists are saying, well, let's pull you to a low day now. So I'm so excited to have you on. I'm going to stop talking and I'd love you to just kind of jump in and talk about who you are and your inspiration for starting the company. Sure. And really please guide me like to, to where your audience, when you, where you see, because I can blabber a lot about everything. So just uh, take me to the places you think your audience will uh, find uh, interesting, inspiring and whatsoever. Love uh, it. Well, first off, tell us about Lumen and, and tell us about how you were able to get this, this incredible idea started. Okay, so it's uh, like every, I think like every startup, it's, uh, it starts with a very personal journey, but then it becomes, it's like a community journey or uh, the employees or the community or people like you that are really, it becomes other people's journey as well, but it really starts with something very personal. So I've been doing startups uh, my whole like business life in a way in the last 17 years. And uh, in that process where I, I built software uh, companies, uh, I gained weight. I gained a lot of weight and I was uh, overweight and frustrated by that. And in parallel, uh, I got married very well to... Uh, a woman who is a scientist who has a twin sister that is also a scientist. So actually everything that I'll tell about my spouse applies to her twin sister. They're both now co-founders at Lumen. So that this is why I'm elaborating and this is why it's important. But um, my spouse, Michal, and her twin sister, Merav, they were um, doing research in the space of cardiac arrhythmia in the space of physiology, basically. And in that research and uh, in, in that PhD studying, they went to start doing Ironman competitions and they became obsessed around nutrition and fueling their body to support the training and also to support the competitions. And uh, in that obsession around nutrition and, and around fueling, they went to study nutrition after their PhD and coming with their understanding of the basic science and like what they practiced on themselves, and, and, and looking at what tools nutritionists have today to really guide people um, and kind of what's the methodology of calorie in, calorie out and how it omits a lot of the complexity and a lot of the, of, uh, the substance of nutrition literacy, they were frustrated. So after the first year, they, they just dropped and they uh, looked at what will be next for them. And, uh, I, and one evening we were sitting down drinking wine and kind of reflecting on what's next. And I was after my startup uh, journey, which was on the one hand successful. I sold a company, but I was overweight. I just had twins born as well. And my wife is an Ironman. So as a man, you don't feel so successful in that moment. And I became obsessed also around, okay, I, how can I get my, my own data? How can I understand my own body? And they looked for, for, a, for a journey change or a career change 
in their life. And I asked them, what do you think you can do in this space of nutrition? What can you invent? Uh, and they came back after two weeks and said, we believe that we can build a device that will be a feedback loop on nutrition and will actually uh, start, you start telling people what's going on and what should they do, uh, what are they doing well and what, should, what they should change probably. And in that, we kind of, with that mission in mind, uh, which didn't really change, it just grew and became more uh, elaborated and maybe more visionary today. But uh, with that mission, we, we, uh, we, started, we started this and it started in reading research and it started in, in looking at hardware and, and sensors and what can be measured and, and how can we fit in how, what, and what market this has uh, potential. So this is right. my, and, and, my beginning. No, and, and, and thank you. And it's it's so interesting to to hear how an incredible idea um, comes to fru fruition. And I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna kick it to Derek in one second. But what's amazing about this is I, I've been a nutrition passionate about nutrition for probably the last 25 years of my life. And throughout the year, I always it's the same thing. Like my I always focus on food quality. It's one thing when someone asks me, what's your what's your diet? You know, do you do I, I go, no, I, I do something called the high quality food program. It's like I like to eat high quality foods and I'm a believer in carbs and I'm a believer in fats. But throughout the year, I would always feel like my body would shift. I do very well on high carbohydrate, um, slow burning high carbohydrates. But six, seven months in, out of nowhere, I'd start feeling heavy and a little sluggish. And then I would go to more of a fat adapted diet. And what's been fascinating about this is I came off to shooting the cover of muscle and fitness where I would normally transition to like a reverse dieting approach, trying to get my calories up even a little bit more and um, all that good stuff. And I, I started Lumen the day, like that night of my shoot, I started, I was doing readings up until then. So it was recognized my body for weeks, but I wasn't following the protocols because I was unsure and I had to do what, what I knew would work for me. And I took the reverse dieting approach now to following the Lumen suggestions every single day from then to literally this, this morning, it has not changed. My energy levels have been through the roof. My body composition, I've been as lean as I've ever been. That's not photo shoot ready. My strengths improving my inflammations down and I am never, and I'm, and I'm having fun with my nutrition. It's not where I'm waking up going, Oh God, I got to eat another 500 grams of carbs today. It's like, all right, I had a high day yesterday. I was north of 400 and today it's telling me I'm at 180 with my fats at 180, which I would never have brought my fats to 180. So it's getting me out of my comfort zone now, but my body feels great. So it's just, it's a perfect example of, we still don't know that much about all this stuff, yeah. you know, and I'm learning every day, but I wanted and, to kick it over. And, to and honestly, I think we are, the recommendation system that you're experiencing is really just the beginning in that, right? You are uh, a very sophisticated user, right? You can actually apply the numbers very easily. But, we, but when we look at all our customers, the, the people who are engaged with that, they need some more tools and probably they need a, a different level of personalization. They are probably, uh, let's say, uh, in, a, in a more, in an earlier place in their nutritional journey. Some of them don't know uh what are healthy fats uh some of them fear fats some of them fear carbs obviously and uh and everyone has this uh, opportunity to to move forward a bit some of them never played with fasting right so all these strategies all these skills that are to be learned around nutrition that's the opportunity for lumen to take people on that journey and it's a, not a journey of reading a book. It's a journey of living that book like you feel. So, so there is a feedback loop, which is not just a metric. It's really, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about uh, what's going on in your body? And for us, this is like a, a breather for me to hear you say that and to, to, to hear that we're already, even though we're still like in the beginning of this uh, evolution of selling balance and not selling a diet, selling a personalized so selling a personalized road or a journey for for every person um, that you found your balance and you found your your journey in Lumen. So that's uh, very flattering and um, humble to uh, to hear that and appreciate. Thank it. you, Derek. Yeah, 
Daniel, can you go back and kind of talk about the science behind how the measurement is done? And I assume it's proprietary and there's patents and everything, but I'm fascinated by, you know, when I first got the device, I thought it would be um, measure, analyzing the composition of my breath, but it's, it's different than that. And I, I, if you can get into that, I, I'm very fascinated. Sure. Sure. So, um, so to understand what, what was invented here, we need to kind of look at the gold standard. So there is a gold standard into analyzing um, or measuring metabolism through the breath. It's called indirect calori calorimetry, which is uh, looking at the CO2 content of your breath, the O2 content, and the flow, the, the volume of air that you're inhaling and exhaling. And when you do that, when you're connected like with a mask or a hood on your head, uh, and you do that for half an hour, this is the gold standard, uh, the, the uh, very expensive machine will uh, take out data and a physician would look and say, well, on, on average in the past 30 minutes, you've been using more fats or more carbs. Okay, and uh, it's a ratio called RQ, respiratory quotient, that kind of looks at what, we, we know we're burning calories and, and metabolism measurement can also tell you how many calories you're burning at rest or your view to max or several metrics. But one of those metrics, which we found extremely interesting as a feedback loop on nutrition is respiratory quotient, is those calories I'm currently burning, are they coming from carbs or are they coming from fats? Or, or it's a mixture, right? It's a ratio between only carbs and only fat and usually we sit somewhere on that scale. Um, but, but that's like, that's one of the metrics in metabolism. What Lumen does, uh, and uh, we exist since 2014. So we had our share of failures into learning how we can actually make that technology uh, applicable. But to begin with, we uh, assumed as uh, ambitious and uh, optimistic entrepreneurs that we will find cheap CO2, O2, and, and flow sensors. We'll take them, connect them together in a consumer package, and we'll find the machine learning algorithms to uh, kind of take the 30 minutes it takes now in the gold standard. We can take it down to, let's say, six or seven breaths. This was our assumption. And it failed on two levels. One, we, we couldn't get, we could get those algorithms going, but not as accurate as we, we wanted to. And on the other end, we failed because we, um, because we couldn't find cheap, accurate, and, and uh, energy uh, efficient enough sensors that are born for that application. So CO2 and O2 sensors, which you would imagine, those are very common gas in, on planet Earth, you would imagine there are abundance of sensors that can do that. But apparently it's not. And those sensors that are accurate enough to the level we need are extremely expensive. So uh, it was 2015 and everything failed on us. Um, but we had, uh, we had conviction around, this is an invention that should be made. Like we really believe that there is a reason for this to, to happen because people will, will find it valuable. So we kind of uh, kickstart this effort again, and uh, Michal and Mirav as scientists went to uh, explore the science and how we can find a correlating metric to the gold standard. And they found a, a method of breathing in a known volume of air, holding your air in your lung for 10 seconds and exhaling. And this basically elevates the CO2 signal that we, that we see. And it, uh, it gets the CO2 that we have in our lungs to be in equilibrium with the CO2 we have in our blood. And the CO2 in our blood is a reflection of carb metabolism. If you want to think about it, the more you're metabolizing carb, the exhaust the, of that fuel you're burning is more CO2. And what our body does in a, on a usual day, it increases the breathing to compensate and ventilate more. But if I'll force you to hold the air in your lungs for 10 seconds, we can actually see uh, that increase to the to a higher level, which will indicate that you're using more carbs, and a lower level of CO2 will indicate that you're using uh, more fats, basically. So, in that, we succeeded to omit the necessity of an O2 sensor, and just use a flow sensor and a CO2 sensor. This just wasn't uh, wasn't simple. We ha still had to build our own proprietary uh, CO2 sensor with a partner 
But this was a process that took us two and a half years in creating that sensor that is dedicated for our application as accurate, as efficient, and, and doesn't cost uh, $1,000 like his uh, big brother who is the, the existing gold standard sensor that you can buy from Philips, for example. So this was the, uh, this is the technology and also the challenges we went through in materializing this technology. So you can actually hold uh, this, uh, this thing in your hand and it will perform in very high correlation to uh, what you can get from the gold standard, the lab tests. That's fascinating. I mean, uh, I've gone in for a, a lot of RMR testing and, and that's, I think a much more tedious process. I mean, you've got to sit down. First off, they're clamping your nose and they're yeah. shoving a tube in your mouth and you've got to sit there completely still for, I want to say it's anywhere from 18 to 25 minutes. And let me tell you, it's really uncomfortable. And at the end of the day, it's spitting out some data to me on how many calories I'm burning at rest. Yeah. And it's beneficial to an extent. One, I'm not going to do that all, all the time. I mean, maybe, I mean, with the access that I used to have in the past, and I have no reason to do it anymore right now because of this, but yeah. because of the access I had in the past, maybe every six months to a year, just to kind of feel it out. And then I could start determining around where my calories need to be. But this is actually diving in even deeper because now it's, it's taking all the uh, guesswork out. And I'll never forget it. I graduated college back in 1999. I'll never forget getting into fitness and wellness and looking at a buddy of mine and saying, oh my God, I wonder if one day they're going to have something that's going to be able to measure exactly what you need to be putting in your body. And yeah. you're just sitting there almost like I, I, would, I was daydreaming about this 20 plus years ago. And when this came out and it was introduced to me, I'm not going to lie. I was like, no way. I'm like, there's, yeah. there's yeah. no way. It's a hoax. It's not going to work. Um, you know what? I'm not going to do it right. Let me just start testing it. Let me see what's going on. I went to some buddies who are research experts in the wellness field. They were skeptical about it. I started, um, I, I started measuring with it, wasn't following the protocol. And then afterwards, I started following the protocol. Then I received that study that Ulrike, one of your head nutritionists, um, sent to me from, what was it? The San Francisco University or there was a, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that was it. And um, I sent it now to one of Derek and, 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 and um, I's friend, his name is Brandon Marcello. And Brandon read it, Derek, and went, oh, that's interesting. And I sent that study to him after I spent a, a couple of months using it already. And he's like, how do you feel? And I'm like, Brandon, this ain't my first rodeo here. Like I've been, I've been knee deep in nutrition, not sporadically, but passionate and yeah. I am, I am coming off of what should be a time where I'm crashing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to start implementing more carbs, more fats in. There's a little guesswork. My body might be a little different than it was two years ago and four years ago. And it's, in my opinion, nailing it. But more importantly, it's keeping me really intrigued. I'm yeah. having fun with it. And, yeah. and it's I'm, there's no downside. That, that, that's like, so there are two things that, echo from what you, you, you say. One is you're now feeding into the entrepreneur biggest fear. Like it, when, you're in, when you're innovating or inventing in, in a in domain that is, has so much, so many fat diets and it's really led by marketing. And every year there is another, like the next evolution of something which is, uh, which is usually marketing fit, right? In, in, in that uh, domain. Uh, your biggest fear is that you'll be called snake oil. Like that really people will not believe. And for us as not only as entrepreneurs, as scientists, we really went through this uh, via Dolorosa of, of building and grinding the science and failing. And, and for us, this was like, um, we, we must uh, do things that usually consumer companies don't do, which is to hold a research group. And that group, we should tell them, listen, guys, we are on the edge of science. We know some things, we don't know everything, but we're going to run with hypothesis and we're going to validate them. And we're going to do this with healthy people. And very soon you'll see a research coming from uh, an Israeli hospital here in Tel Aviv, about uh, 33 subjects who are pre-diabetic and, and the impact they, they went through in the lumen intervention and the measurements. And, and for us, this became um, 
really part of our core, uh, our core experience. We do that research, even though no university fund this, we fund it in a way, like we start by funding this research our, ourselves, but because we believe that our audience, our, our early adopters, our community that is formed around Lumen, just like you, the people, they, they can't get excited uh, and can stand behind something that is, uh, you know, it's 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 not proven. It doesn't sit on any on on solid ground. So for me, that's one thing that really echoes. And the second thing is that we didn't intend to, but we came to realize that science doesn't solve the problem of 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 people in their weight loss journey or in any journey in a way. It's just a portion. And for us, it's uh, the, the 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 fact that people stop and breathe. The, the fact that people stop and think about their nutrition today and think about what they've done yesterday and the fact that they kind of commit to, to a plan even, even and the fact that it's playful, the fact that you're saying I'm playing with my nutrition, we're going to triple down on that because things we're doing that are benefiting, benefiting our health shouldn't be um, like medical, they should be fun, they should be uh, an experience I'm expecting to do because in a way it programs me to better behavior and it's it's bettering my my health. So all these things we are learning as we we go and we're building this vision of what should Lumen be because it's not a, a device uh, or a measurement tool. The measurement is a slice, but eventually if I can't help you get to your goal, then I, I don't think devices have any uh, uh, almost any existent any reason to exist in consumer. Uh, space today. Okay. Yeah, it's clear that uh, obviously this is teaching us, you know, how to eat and organize our eating. What does it teach us about how to exercise and what types of exercise to choose? So this is stuff stuff that is still in uh, in like in, in process. I can tell you that when we started, we thought, okay, we build a device. The, the application would probably be weight loss because this is. People are not looking to measure their metabolism. They're looking to lose weight or to get leaner or to, to, uh, to master their nutrition. But uh, at some point in time, we started looking at the cohort of users we have, and we have a lot. And in a way, um, against the RMR, the gold standard, today we have the biggest set of data of metabolic measurement ever in the world existed in context as well, because our customers are, are using it several times a day on average. And, uh, and we get all their profile and we get all their data. So in a way, research is, is continuously happening all the time. So the first thing we learned is, is that there is like being in, in shape and out of shape. There is this axis of being metabolically in shape and metabolically out of shape, which we all run, run on. And it's easy to identify that when you talk about people who are pre-diabetic, right? Or diabetic, no one wakes up just becoming diabetic. It's very, very rare. It's type one, but in type two, you let, you trail yourself into that position. And, and it's not, uh, and it happens with our lifestyle and it happens with a lot of things. And, and what the first thing we learned is that we are all, we all sit on that axis. We just, uh, we are just becoming aware when the doctor says you're pre-diabetic, your, your weight is now putting you at risk, your blood works, doesn't look well. So, that's the first thing we learned that we can actually, we can talk about health. It's not, we, we are not really a weight loss company. People come for us because they want to lose weight. Our, our goal and, our, and the key is how to build a lifestyle that maintain metabolic health and in that meta maintain uh, weight maintenance in a way or healthy, healthy weight. And, and, and today with Lumen, so activity and, and workouts, are um, are mainly used as a as a mechanism to uh, to show healthy weight. It's still not something that we that we proactively tell you exactly how to train. I can tell you that for me, I'm actually tuning my workouts based on my uh, based on my measurement because I know that when I when I'm on a pre workout. Uh, uh, moment and I'm using carbs, I know I can lift heavier. I know I can actually uh, use those carbs and, and I, can, uh, I can stop telling me myself excuses. I technically have that energy. I can just push to the max. And if I, uh, I'm, I'm on a pre-workout and I'm burning fat, for example, I can know that this is an opportunity for me to extend this workout. 
I can actually see how comfortable can I be in prolonged workouts on fat burn. So, and, and this is still not well researched and established, but this is, uh, for me, it's a driver. And I know for uh, other people in the community, it's a driver to make decisions and really empowers them to, to say, okay, I can tweak my training or I can tweak my eating before the workouts to support what I'm already having planned. I, I'm I'm really enjoying the structure in the sense of like when I used to carb cycle or I used to follow a specific macro plan and and for me it's less stressful for me to follow the plan. I find it's more stressful for me to do intuitive eating because then I don't really know, you know, am, am I a meal short? Am I am I a couple of servings of of carb short or protein short? But I know yesterday was a perfect example. Um, I woke up and. I would not have gone into a high carb day if the plan didn't say it. So if the plan was a medium carb day or a low carb day, I would have followed it. And I thought that's what I was going to say, but I woke up and I was almost like a little bit, um, I, I felt like I needed to be replenished and it gave me a boost day. And I started laughing. I'm like, oh my God, like, intuitively, that's what I felt like I needed. And it was telling me that. And that's, I've been having a lot of those experiences and it's been a lot of fun. And now it's allowing me to rotate foods a little bit more frequently. Now it's allowing me to, um, maybe, maybe I'm not developing as many food sensitivities because it's allowing me to have to scale back on certain foods I might've been overdoing. Like I always do overdo sweet potatoes, but on a boost day, for me to consume the amount of Fine. carbs that I need eating sweet potatoes, I need jasmine rice because it's much more yes. higher in carbs. So it's allowing yes. me to get off the sweet potato or maybe allowing me to have some more fruit or on the higher fat days, I would never consume nuts and seeds. Now I need more nuts, seeds, and oil. So when I'm looking at my week, Derek um, and uh, Daniel, I, I, I'm noticing that throughout a seven day span, I am getting so much more variety of nutritious foods. And in the long run, I believe this is going to be incredibly beneficial. I, I, I agree. And, and in a way, it's hard to build intuition for nutrition in today's world, right? It's, you have things ready in your fridge, right? The, the, the guys at work are ordering food. So, so your intuition or, or your decision-making process is usually, in, in many cases, not fully in your control. Like it's, uh, you can let go and you can switch to someone else's intuition. And, and this allows you to kind of connect to that intuition. So, so yes, you felt that you need to replenish and, and, and Lumen told you it's valid, you need to replenish. And so on the one hand, yes, you can get more in tune to your feeling and it's, and it's great, but someone else that had a stressful day and didn't notice would see that in the daytime will build that trust and he can just, without feeling it, he can, he can apply. That's maybe the, um, the opportunity here. I love it. Because I think people should be intuitive about their, their nutrition eventually. I don't think it should be uh, a work uh, that is done on a daily basis. And I don't think that people should only eat after they measure. I don't think that. But I think that the, the measurement has a very strong uh, element or a tool to allow people to build that intuition and to let it go sometime and to take it back. And it's uh, and it's and this is where we want to be. So... I'm just getting into uh, the pattern here of using it. And if for somebody who's going to thinking of purchasing a lumen, what should they expect in terms of how many times they should measure? And then when they get to a point where you're like, Don, Don's a little psychotic. So let's be honest here. Uh, not as many people will be as, you know, what looking at everything like he does, but is there a point where you think, okay, once you understand your, your patterns and your scheduling of eating and, and, can you kind of wean yourself off of doing too many evaluations and maybe do it once in a while? That's a very, that's a very good point. Um, for, for us, it's um, today, as you can experience Lumen, Lumen is uh, you will, you, you, there is a ritual. You measure in the morning, we will build a personalized nutrition plan for you. We'll ask you a few questions about yesterday and about the day that is coming and and boom, you're done. You know where you are. You know what's your plan for today. And if, if you've been using it as well for like a week or two, you also have your metabolic flexibility score. You have a score that tells you how healthy your metabolism is. What's coming next in the coming month is uh, kind of unbundling uh, those values. 
because um, a person like uh, Don, for example, that we have a lot of data about him, let's say he forgot to breathe today, but we, can, we, also, we already know him so well, so we can actually build that plan without him breathing, right? And, and, we know, uh, and we know other data. We know that he hasn't slept well or he has slept well. And these are also drivers to, to make some changes. So it's not that we're uh, taking the measurement out, we're keeping it and the ritual of, which is important to build habits, we're keeping that. But um, definitely we can, we can build Lumen for different levels of intensity of usage. So it could be more of an intense assessment once, uh, uh, once a month where you measure in several points during the day. And then you can just get away with four times a week or three times a week of morning measurements or maybe once a week. But you still have that trust built with Lumen that it can feed you well in, in that week. So the engagement can move into the recommendation engine, into a weekly reflection of all your data coming from Lumen, but also coming from any other integration we're uh, building. And some of them are already built and performing very well with Apple Watch, with Garmin. Um, so, so definitely there is value to be delivered also beyond the measurement. Right, I mean, I've, I've, Derek, I've, I've played around with measuring, I think as much as eight to 10 times a day. And I've played around, which you're gonna laugh about and I, but I, Again, it's it's fun. It's very fun for for me. So morning, you know, before a meal, after a meal, obviously within that sixty to ninety minute span after a workout, and it starts adding up. And it, it only takes probably about. I mean, it's you're holding your breath for ten seconds. I mean, all in it probably takes about a minute to measure, right? It's not it's not it's not very long. But um, I've also measured once a day. I've also turned around and said, all right, I'm just going to measure morning first thing. It's laid out my plan. And then I've went maybe, um, you know, measured in the, in the evening just to see where I was at. And it was great. It, it, it didn't really, and I've done this over a period of time. So when I'm talking about that, I never want anyone to think that, oh, well, you've got to be fanatical and do this eight to 10 times a day. I truly believe that if you woke up first thing and you had some water and, and you sat down and you relaxed for a little bit first thing in the morning, it was about 20 minutes after your wake up and you were to then try this, and then that was it for the day. In my opinion, I think you're gonna be way better off doing that than not doing anything at all. And I wanted to get Daniel's opinion on that. I, I agree. There is something in you know, the way we design our day, like, or we design our houses, right? Around brushing our teeth. There is something that, uh, that giving yourself that moment as of itself has huge value. And, uh, and we, we are promoting this habit forming of, of just reading one time in the morning, finding that moment. And, and, and if that, there is one thing you should do in the day, that's probably that. It's getting that morning checkup and continuing your day. Um, the, the, in terms of what value other can be created in the system, we, we envision, uh, and we actually did some, some tests on that as well as we try to explore where can we be valuable to our customers? So we experiment with uh, meal delivery. You breathe in the morning, we'll send you an email. We, we, we've done that with three meals that fits your, uh, your budget and fits your, uh, your plan and fits your goal and fits your uh, uh, preferences. And you can choose one. And what we've done is we door dash that meal to people. And for six weeks, those people just ate Lumen for lunch, Monday to Friday. And all of them wanted to continue at some capacity and that capacity was uh, intense because apparently people like to, um, to give that trust or, or to, let's say, outsource that ability to make good decisions about their lunch to, uh, to a system or to themselves in the morning even. So there are so many values that can be created with Lumen that extend from the measurement, but they, they derive from the measurement, but eventually it, it can become something that um, we believe, it can become something that really sits around us and help us make better decisions for us, also for our family. This is where we're taking this brand and this, uh, this company. Daniel, is there value in having young people, um, kids to even to do assessments and teach them from an educational point of view of how to manage their diets and Huge, I, I, I think huge value. Um, the, the, the reason we don't 
take that niche yet and, and really push that in um, is because <laughs> honestly, we needed to choose an, a market and started testing that because kids have a very different lung capacity and it changes as well as they grow. So for us to be good at that, we need to really apply research into this. And, 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 it's, uh, and this is just, you know, we, today, if someone buys this and he's too young, we were, we're, like we were saying some disclaimers and saying this is not necessarily for you. If you want to re, like change your mind, we'll compensate you on that and give you back your money. So, I, but it, theoretically, I, I believe that this is, this is what we should be because in a way, that's nutrition literacy is, is a problem and it's an opportunity for people to just learn about more, more about nutrition, become more aware as their kids, as they're building those habits, it's priceless. So I think what you're saying is probably the biggest opportunity because it will do to prevention of disease, uh, that will be the major hit, right? But today, no insurance company is looking at that domain. It's not willing to really compensate for prevention because it doesn't cut, it, to the, in today's world, it doesn't uh, cut their savings in a way. So it's, you know, uh, it's, it's a problem and an opportunity. You, you know, I, I almost see it when, Derek, that was, that was a great question, but um, I almost see it as if, if I have a daughter who's 14. So I, I would get very panicked if she started measuring macros right now. I just, I don't, I want her to be a kid. I don't want her to obsess, but she's coming into the gym every night and she's walking on the treadmill because she wants to. She does swimming because she wants to, and they enjoy that. I almost see it where if it was, if you're under a certain age, I can almost imagine rather than it spitting at you, your macros or your fats and carbs, it would say some points like, Hey, Amelia, today, try and focus more on nuts and yeah. specific oils and seeds. And tomorrow, if it's higher carbs, try some fruits and grains and getting your protein with potatoes and just giving suggestions because she doesn't right now, she still asks me, well, what's good to eat? What's good to eat? And I have to be very cautious on what I'm telling her because I don't want to create bad habits and I don't want to create a monster. And I still want her to understand that she can have ice cream and she still can have fun as a kid, but you still got to make good choices. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. And I think our kids and we, Michal and I, that we're founders in this company, we live by, the, by, this, by this agenda that you're saying. Um, our kids are also curious and asking us. We have twins now 10 years old. Uh, and, it's, uh, and, and they look at what we do and they look at what, uh, what we care about and that makes them care. So even by the fact that you are now using and putting attention to your way, to your nutrition, to your lifestyle, they benefit just by that because they, they, their, their world of values is changing because your world of values is, is also changing. And so that's already helpful. I see our kids, they're so curious. They're asking so much. We're not preaching for anything, but they uh, play around with becoming a vegetarian. They want to know how it feels to them. And, and when I was a kid, vegetarian was not something which was an option. Vegan, not at all. Like it's, it, it was a stray from the mainstream and now they can allow themselves to experiment and they can allow themselves to ask questions and they constantly ask us uh, what are carbs, are, are there carbs in that and olive oil, like they're, they're really curious and I think it's, uh, that's already a good spot, even if they're not really using themselves. Derek, yeah. Oh, Derek, I actually had a, I, sorry, I had, I had a question for, uh, for Derek. Um, Derek, you wonder from a performance standpoint, because Derek works with, you know, so many runners and he's a world-class um, running mechanics coach, but Derek, you wonder how many athletes are truly undernourished, right? And maybe some of the kids aren't great with the macro data, but if they were getting suggestions, almost like a little suggested, um, you know, itemized menu of foods to choose from, you wonder if they start consuming more calories, which is their energy. And you're wondering if, they're, if their foods are a little bit more balanced. You wonder if it's a little bit more motivating because you will have that gamification component of your, of your um, metabolic flexibility score. When I started, I was at a seven, which is on like the lower end. Now I'm up in the 19s 
and I'm like psyched about it. I'm like, oh, that's that's fun. That's that's very cool. You wonder if implementing that gamification component is gonna gonna help out from a performance standpoint. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, Dave. Well, I I find it interesting that, I mean, like Daniel said, now it becomes a marketing strategy around who you want to target because you have a lot of these devices could be classified well as lifestyle devices, but there's a medical application, there's a performance application, there's an education application. And, and I guess my question for Daniel is, you know, obviously you're starting with body composition and fat loss and, and people want to look better. When do you start branching out and using this tool to hit these other markets? So um, it's a great question. And already now, when uh, Don is talking about metabolic flexibility and that score that we put in the forefront uh, that you get today after two weeks, but soon you'll start getting it uh, much sooner. Um, so already we're talking about metabolic health. So it's not, not in the discussion. And what you see is that customers that are succeeding with Lumen, and you can look, there is a huge vibrant community that, that is uh, extremely engaged. When people uh, frame their success, they no longer talk I lost uh, seven pounds or 20 pounds or 60 pounds. They'd say that, but they say, and my flexibility has increased this and that. So now you coupled weight loss with health. And this is important because in a way, the, the weight they lost will not help them to preserve that weight they lost, but the flexibility score and the understanding that it ties to health, healthy lifestyle and things they've done, they know how they achieve that that's different, like they, they acquired another skill. So I think we're already in the, let's say, health for the healthy realm in that domain, because what sets apart the healthcare system, the public health really from what we call healthcare system is just a monetary element, right? It's just, what do we take care of? What condition someone decided that it's worthwhile taking care of? What's the incentives to take care of that condition? right? How grave is the danger, right? And, and I would say that chronic bad lifestyle uh, danger is becoming more and more grave. It's, it's, it's really more and more concerning, but it's slippery because you need to, to touch on people's lifestyle and, and, and pharma companies don't know how to engage in that manner. They know how to engage with pills or with procedures. So, so there is a healthcare play in the healthy, on the healthy people, because this is what public healthcare is actually now. It's about uh, behavioral change and it's about healthy habits and it's about framing what is healthy when you don't have symptoms that are extremely apparent, that are, uh, that are making you engage and go to the doctor. Because how many people go to the doctor about their lifestyle and their concerns around lifestyle? This is not happening, right? So I, I just think that the, the, the framing of going for medical, going for, uh, for just wellness, or there, there, there is uh, something that, that the lines are becoming a bit blurry to some extent. So, uh, but, but to your question, I think that, that we need to be in all the spectrum because if you want to say that metabolic health is, is the same issue that people who are dealing with insulin resistant, they have it, but they, they, they just don't recognize it when they're just, starting to become overweight and we know that there is a connection not not a uh, correlation not absolute connection but there is high correlation then we understand that it's the same the same thing that is happening it's just in the healthcare system it's treated with medication and for healthy people they try to lose weight they try to become healthier they try to look better but it's the same it's it's a, an extrapolation of the same uh, mechanism that is uh, falling apart in people you know, it, it, it's, I really don't think it's any different than approaching a business or I'm renovating my home right now. You're renovating your home, right? It's, it's how do you go about doing that? Well, you hire an architect, right? And you establish a plan and you might have to bring in engineers in to figure out if that print plan is sound. Then you go, you get your contractor who then brings their team in. You know, you don't sit there as a CEO and say, I have a vision, you know, to become a billionaire and build this company and then just sit back and look at your bank account every day. Like it's not gonna work. You have to focus on what you need to do to execute every day. And I feel like as a society for decades, 
we've been using the wrong thing to quantify our success. And we've been using a scale. And I'm not saying that there's no benefit in having a scale. Sometimes it could really reinforce good things that are happening. But again, waking up every day, hopping on the scale, I'm up a pound, I'm down a pound. It's this, it's this emotional roller coaster you're putting that that society is putting people through. Where and that's why I fell in love with this score so much because I'm like, wait a second, if the principles and the values are there and you don't look at the scale, even if your goal is weight loss or fat loss, two different things. Um, if you pay attention to those, you know, that focus every day and that score improves, everything else is going to happen. If you turn around as a contractor and you focus on, well, today we have to lay down the foundation. We have to wait for the cement to dry. We focus on what we need to do every day with a plan and we don't obsess over the finished product. We do what we need to do today. We're going to get people to where they want to be, I think, easier with more confidence. And at the end of the, the day, that's what the goal should be, in my opinion. Hundred percent. I, 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 yeah. I think that the, the the weight paradigm, the weight is a good is a good data point. It's not a good driver to decisions in a way. It's not like uh, it's when you stepped on a scale. It's post everything you've done in a way, right? And it puts you in a in a position that doesn't really help you or empowers you to make other decisions. But when I wake up on fat burn and I know what happened, I know that I'm now in a good place. I'm in acceleration towards fat burn. So it's kind of a stage before that. I'm making my body healthier. I'm supporting weight loss on a, on a more, let's say, um, uh, on, a, on, a, on a larger scale in, to some extent. On a, and I look at my, 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 uh, my future and I can say, okay, I'm doing this for several days. This is going to happen, even if I don't see it on the scale immediately. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I have nothing to add to uh, your, your note. I think it's I think beautiful. D, anything else? Uh, yeah, I had one more question. You, you were saying how your wife and her sister were doing triathlons, Ironman. Has there been any sort of reflection back on how they could better fuel for that leading up to it and maybe even during using this type of device? So when they did it, they, they didn't have the device. It was all <laughs> intuitive. When uh, we started this startup journey, the, the, the competition, like the, 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 the marathon became that startup in a way. So you know how these competitions really demand a lot of your attention, your stamina, your, your day-to-day, like with seriously time. And you can't, it's, I, I won't say you can't. It's really hard to be an entrepreneur, uh, a parent, and uh, an extreme athlete of that source in the same uh, level. So they switch to other things. Uh, so uh, acrobatic uh, pole uh, dancing, for example, like there, there are other things that they can challenge themselves uh, in and they can uh, master. But uh, funny to say, they never use the lumen in that, at, like in that surrounding. In, they, they just uh, were in tune to their intuition and they used to wake up and eat, uh, I remember that, they used to wake up in the middle of the night, eat proteins and go back to sleep before the workout. Like doing so many crazy experiments and, uh, and, and yeah, that got them basically to the level they want to uh, dive deeper into this. Yeah, that would, that would be interesting now to get their thoughts of like, if they had to do it all over again and they have this knowledge using this device, because I... There's a, there's a huge market out there for endurance athletes and that would probably benefit. I think now they were in a very good position to design experiments around that and come with good hypotheses. So I can connect you guys. It's, uh, it's fascinating to, uh, to see that knowledge they have now really apply to uh, what they love doing. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all promoting healthy calories here, right? And we're, we're promoting a rotation of, of those calories. And in my experience, I've seen, you know, one of two things, someone either consuming too much of the wrong calories, or the majority of the people who are consuming what they think are a lot of the right calories just isn't enough. And when you, and when you peel back the layers and you actually do RMR testing and you look at what their total daily energy expenditure is, you notice that, oh, wow, you're falling short here. And if you're always in this deficit, if you're always restricting, um, 
you know, people are going to be in way worse shapes. So listen, can you do me a favor? I mean, we were just, we were just bouncing out. I mean, can you tell everyone where they can find Lumen, where they can learn more about the company? I mean, I'm, right. I'm promoting the, I'm promoting the heck out of it because it fits into what it is I do. It's making my, my life easier personally, and it's making my job easier with the thousands of people that I'm working with. It's taking the guesswork out. So thank I you guys. I want to interview you for like uh, the next session we have, to- whenever you have time. I want to interview you because in a way, I think that people like you and you specifically have a very crucial role in, in, in the message and in, in growing this uh, company. So I would love like another 30 minutes with you at any time. Next uh, week, the week after, you, you and- shoot me a message on what works for you. Let's do it sooner than later. But I think um, right now, the objective is you got to get the message out because this is an easier in my opinion, safer and more effective way of doing things. And I'm, I'm all in. So um, can you just let everyone know um, where they can find more about the company and maybe you? Sure. So uh, we are basically, uh, we, we sell online. That's the only way you can uh, today get a Lumen. It's through uh, our website. It's www.lumen.me, dot me basically. And you can follow us on Instagram, on, on social. Uh, we're there as well. But start with the website, start with learning about metabolism and see if that's a tool that can, uh, can help you. And if anyone wants to know um, more about it, or if they have questions, they can always reach out to me on my, um, you can DM me on my Instagram, uh, going to my favorite section on donsaldino.com. I'm offering Lubin there. So it's a very easy one click if you guys want to check it out. Derek, I definitely want you and I to talk more about this. Uh, Derek's definitely been more into the intuitive eating, but I, I do believe that this is something that I, I don't think you have to take as severe of an approach as I'm taking. I think one reading a day, I think it sets you on the right pace and it at least gives you some good thoughts and good tools to become even more successful and live a longer, healthier life. Yeah. Great stuff. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to really getting into it a lot deeper and, and even managing my workouts a bit differently too. Daniel, thank you. Thank you for this, by the way. It was such an honor having you on. I was so excited. No, it was to meet uh, you. such a pleasure chatting with you guys. It's like, uh, I, I, I live and work for, for these interactions. You guys are the first believers soon, Derek, as well. I, uh, I sense that, but really the, the, the first people who, who understand, buy into the concept can, can create this vision that we, we thought about in our backyard. Like really, this is, uh, so for me, it's, it's the goal of my, my own journey to, to have these conversations. When I was getting really connected with the product and I did my research, in a way, it's, it's not something that we're, I'm really following anyone on. In, in, in the US right now, I almost feel like in a way that I'm going to be a person leading this because you know people are so, yeah, they're unsure. Well, that can't be possible. It's going to happen. Like there are 20 years ago, who would have thought we were taking pictures and, and doing web meetings on our phones? I mean, it's just a matter of time. I was saying this in 99, like I said earlier, this is going to happen and it's happening. It's exciting to be on the forefront with a team of people that is really kind of revolutionizing something that I think is going to become a standard. I, I really do. And um, yeah, would love to come on and let's, and let's keep in touch. If there's anything we can do, you let us know. Proud to have you on the team, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.